Welcome then to episode 3 of the Manager Leader Continuum. Where do you stand on this continuum? Now, we are in this episode going to talk about two or three very important distinctive points between a manager and a leader. A manager respects hierarchy. You say, hey, you got to report to me directly. Person sitting down below, please jump over, please don't jump over your boss and come to me. This is going to create dissensions within the hierarchy. So everything is based on hierarchy and generally higher you are placed, more wisdom is attributed to you. More authority, of course, is vested in you and bright ideas coming from below in the hierarchy are generally snuffed out. So therefore, a manager is basically respecting hierarchy and therefore the great ideas which may be emanating at grade one may not see the light of the day because A, the environment in the organization is such that the person will not venture to come out with his idea. But more importantly, even if that idea does come out, you say, hey, you got the arrogance of telling us this. You've been here in the organization just for six months and I've been here for 16 years. You telling me? Because you're wedded to hierarchy. A leader, on the other hand, he sees potential winners. He has a very perceptive eye and he does not know any hierarchy. In fact, hierarchy may not exist in an informal organization. There can be a network. There can be people who are equal. There can be groups doing particular things and particular tasks. One person, a junior person, may actually be the convener of a group here. And for the second task, another person may be the convener of a group. In other words, the ossified, cemented, cast in stone hierarchy is not something which a leader would always be wedded to, of course. He values seniority, the people with more experience and more wisdom, they've seen the world, yes, but does not mean that he goes by the hierarchy and people down the line are ignored. In fact, one of the important aspects of leader and one of the very important attributes which I've personally seen is people in leadership position, they are able to see and spot a youngster who shows potential and He's mentored, he's built up. And this is what happens with leaders and not with managers. Managers, next point, as we have said, you're managing people. You're supposed to have not only skill of doing it, but art of getting it done. And since you're getting things done, you need to know the basics of what the guys are doing. You can be a software manager, but you may not be a great coder, but you would at least understand the rudimentary principles of how coding is done. And therefore, he is in a way from the creamy layer. And what is the creamy layer? The bell curve, or the Gaussian curve. So manager comes, in my personal opinion, if this is totally a merit-driven organization, the people who ascend to the management position, middle management and higher management especially, are from the top 5% of the bell curve. They have great qualities. They, in the statistical di distribution, are among the top five. But what about a leader? A leader is an outlayer. Outlayer is a beautiful concept. There are statistical distributions, there are correlation curves and so on. But you will find one person who is sitting and does not fit into a pattern. He has extraordinary qualities, baby. He may have corresponding disabilities. That is another thing which have to be taken care of. But generally, a leader is an outlayer. He sees beyond the things as they are. He sees things from a different perspective. He does not respect status quo and hierarchy. And therefore, while a manager is from the top 5% of the Gaussian statistical distribution curve among the chosen few, a leader is more of a God-gifted person, an outlier 
who takes upon himself as a sacred duty, his sacred dharma, his calling, and not just an occupation or an employment to achieve a mission that he holds very dear. Managers, next point, can be very, very insecure and apprehensive. If you have a bright youngster who is your second in command, you could get insecure. I'm a senior manager, but I have someone who's 10 years my junior, but you know from your heart of hearts that he can do your job actually better than you. And you are not looking at your promotion for the next five years. So you will be, a manager would be ordinarily, it's a human trait, be insecure. We as human beings have this instinct for first trying to defend ourselves, to be secure ourselves. Maybe it comes from the built-in, hard-wired, caveman, evolutional and evolutionary type of defense mechanism. So manager would always be a little sherry, a little apprehensive, little insecure when he has a youngster who happens to be bright one can step in his shoes and render him redundant. On the other hand, leader actively and actually cultivates a second line and a rung of leadership and there he picks up the best people from down below of course he's very conscious that he may not cause heart burning to pick up favorites of nepotism but he has this sense of building up a very very strong second line of command they may be invisible Generally, charismatic leaders are the only one whose faces we see in the organization, especially spiritual leaders. But if you're heading an organization in a formal sense and each of these have their procedures and processes, you have a very, very strong second line and rung of leadership whom the charismatic leader has actively prepared. So friends, in this episode, for now, that is all. And stay tuned for the next one where we talk about three other different differences on this continuum. But please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. These talks may be of value to some of your friends. Stay tuned.